Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Sam. I make videos about makeup, chronic illness, and whatever I want. Today's video, we're going to be going over my favorites from 2021. This is going to be one of my longer videos, so just settle in and I will just get right into it. The first list of favorites is going to be my favorite TV shows. I tend to watch more TV than movies at any given time because I feel like more story can happen over a TV series or season than what you can get done just in, you know, like a two hour movie. That's just me. So there's going to be a lot of TV shows on here. The first one is Why Women Kill. This is a dark comedy drama that revolves around women killing, kind of like the name gives away. The first two, or the first two, the only two seasons aren't related at all. So go into them separately. I got a little like unsure about season two because I came right off the tail end of season one. Season two is also amazing, but you can't compare them to each other. The first season takes place in the same house but in various time frames like many different decades apart uh you just see like multiple families living in the same house which is kind of cool and season two basically revolves around a woman who is lower income but loves gardening and wants to join like the rich women's gardening club both seasons are great i highly recommend it it's funny it's very interesting and uh love it the next one is going to be a teen drama thriller. It's called Cruel Summer. I like these types of shows, just like I like Gossip Girl. I like, um, what is the name of that show? It's like The Secrets. My brain just totally farted. Uh, Pretty Little Liars. They, oh my god, that took me like two minutes. It's more of a juvenile show, but sometimes that's just easier to digest and that's just kind of something that you want because you want something easier to watch but is entertaining. This show takes place in the 90s, which is kind of neat. You don't see a ton of stuff that wasn't made in the 90s based in the 90s. It's about a girl who disappears and then another girl who basically tries to become her, or takes her friends and things like that. It's very interesting, kept me very invested, and I will say it was one of those shows where I didn't know what was coming. Maybe if you were someone who like tries to guess the ending, it might have been easy to figure out, but I like to just take it as I receive the information and the ending was a twist. It seems like there's going to be a season two based on how it ended. I'm not sure if that's confirmed or not, but that would be neat. Next up, we have Midnight Mass. Mike Flanagan makes some really great shows. Haunting of Hill House is one of my favorites. I also liked Haunting of Bly Manor. This is not a haunting of X show. This is something different. It is a supernatural horror. Uh, it's on Netflix. It's about an island community isolated from the rest of the world that starts to experience strange and supernatural events when a new priest filling in for the other priest shows up in their town. I thought this was beautiful. Like, all of his stuff is beautiful. The acting is great. I feel like it gave you a lot to think about. I really enjoyed it. I actually stayed up till 8 o'clock in the morning to finish the whole series because I just didn't want to stop. I'm not recommending you do that, but... Uh, that's just how good it was. Only Murders in the Building. This is a mystery comedy, which it was hilarious. I couldn't get enough of it. I also finished this in one sitting, but I started it earlier in the day, so I wasn't up till 8 a.m. This follows three strangers who share an obsession with a true crime podcast, and they use that obsession to fuel the investigation of a murder that happens in their apartment building. It is Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez. All of them are fantastic. Martin Short and Steve Martin are hilarious. It's kind of like a classic form of humor. I, I really enjoy it. I definitely recommend this. I can't wait for season two. Like, I, I truly can't. I think they might have already started filming, which is exciting. The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. This is a Prime exclusive or like Prime original. I'm not quite sure what they call it. This is a period comedy drama that takes place in the late 1950s, the early 1960s. It follows Miriam or Midge Maisel who finds her love of stand-up comedy and pursues it as a career. I think the show is gold. I also really love Tony Shalhoub who plays her dad in this show. You might also know him as, like, Monk the Detective from that show. 
I think this show's a 10 out of 10. It's very entertaining. It's, it's not comedy in the sense of, like, a sitcom. It's, it's got serious moments and things like that. It's an overall great show. I really, really enjoy it. I also love the costumes. Like the 60s and 70s are my favorite for clothing and things like that. I'm sure you could tell by my glasses. They're very 60s inspired. So check that out if you have Prime. And finally for TV shows, What We Do in the Shadows. This is a mockumentary comedy horror. It follows four vampire roommates who live on Staten Island. My brother recommended the show and he's very good at recommending things to me and I think it's hilarious. The way they ended the last season, I it was great. It was a cliffhanger. I can't wait for the next season. I think it got renewed. Hope it got renewed. It's on FX or Hulu. If you love any kind of like horror type stuff, it is a little bit gory, I would say, so keep that in mind, but it's really funny. Our next subject is like movies. I didn't watch a lot of movies this year. Pre-COVID I really enjoyed going to the movies and I consumed a lot more of them. Uh, last year I watched a few more just because uh, more things were on streaming services. This year I just wasn't really feeling movies. I really went into the TV shows as you can tell. So the first one is actually three movies. I'm grouping it as one, but it's a trilogy, and that's the Fear Street trilogy. My favorite was 1978, which I'm sure it doesn't surprise you based on what I just said. Uh, trilogy movies based on the book series Fear Street by R.L. Stein, who wrote Goosebumps, if you aren't familiar. The overall story revolves around teenagers who work to break the curse that's been placed on their town. This is also one of those things, it's more gay gauge towards teenagers so it is kind of juvenile. I saw people say it was boring and silly and they didn't like it but it is meant for a younger audience so that it doesn't surprise me. I thought it was very enjoyable anyway but I also do enjoy enjoy some like younger adult movies and tv shows and uh, books just for Something that's easier to digest, I guess. I don't know. Sometimes the stories are just interesting. I liked this. I was excited to see some horror content released this year, especially when everyone else went back to normal life. I'm still stuck at home, so I couldn't go see things in the theater. Which brings me to the next one, Halloween Kills. I'm very grateful that while it was in the theaters, it also dropped on Peacock, so I was able to watch it at the same release date as everyone else. This is my second favorite Halloween movie. John Carpenter's Halloween 1978, I think it's 78, is my favorite. Is it my favorite if I don't know what year it is? I thought the kills in this movie were fantastic, especially the fireman, if you know, you know. That was, it, it was so creative. It's incredibly gory. It's incredibly violent. If that is not your thing, maybe skip this Halloween movie. Yes, Michael Myers does kill people in every movie, but this one was very different and it's in the title. 10 out of 10, I will definitely be adding it to my physical collection when it comes out on DVD. A final movie is, I guess, more of a comedy special, and that is Bo Burnham's Inside. I get it's mostly uh, mentally ill people who enjoyed this, but I loved the range of emotions you felt along with him. I loved that it was funny, it was serious, like you felt what he felt. It was beautifully shot. Uh, to know he did all of that him himself. He deserves every award he's won. And if you're kind of more into like that dark comedy, I highly recommend it. If that isn't your scene, kind of skip it because it is kind of dark. But I really, really enjoyed it. <clears throat> I also love the soundtrack and I listen to it on a regular basis. Two books. The first is Carrie by Stephen King. I'm sure most of us know what Carrie is. Maybe you've seen the movie, maybe you've read the book, maybe both. I love the movies and decided to check the book out. I've really, really been enjoying Stephen King. I think he's my favorite horror author. I don't know that I've read many others now that I think about it. So I've been slowly digesting all of his books. He has a lot of them. And so Carrie was next on the list. And I think it honestly was better than the movie, which is quite often the case with his adaptations. The movies are good in most cases. I've heard The Shining is terrible, so I haven't watched it, but the books are always better. Uh, if you aren't familiar, Stephen King wrote Carrie in 1974, and it the book itself was set primarily in the future of 1979. It revolves around Carrie White, a friendless, bullied high school girl from an abusive religious household, 
who uses her newly discovered telekinetic powers to seek revenge on those who have tormented her. In the process, she causes one of the worst local disasters the town has ever had. Kind of sums it up. I think most of us know at least parts of Carrie, but the book was able to go into much more detail. You got to use much more of your imagination. I, I just enjoyed it a lot more. 10 out of 10 recommend. Next is The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty. I'm sure most of us know what The Exorcist is about because it's a movie as well. I did not like the movie as a kid. I thought it was kind of boring, but I think it's because it kind of came on the coattails of me being able to watch adult horror. And so I was consuming so much of it, and that is very much a slow burn that I just didn't enjoy it. Decided to give the book a shot, and the book is fantastic. So maybe I'll try the movie again, but if you aren't familiar, the book details the demonic possession of 11-year-old Reagan McNeil, the daughter of a famous actress, and two priests who attempt to exercise the demon. I don't know. Basically, it's a movie about an exorcism. Yeah, we get it. This was great. So if you didn't like the movie, but liked the idea of the movie, check out this book. And if you did like the movie, still check out this book if you haven't, because it's very good. Uh, this one is kind of like a cusp. It just made it into the favors, but it isn't as good as the other two I just listed. It's good, but it's not that good. So <laughs> keep that in mind. It's a cusp favorite. The Final Girls Support Group by Grady Hendrix. Grady Hendrix wrote some of the books that I think were in my favorites last year. Let me check. No. None of his books made it to my favorites last year. I just read them last year. Scratch that. So this book is basically about Final Girls. I'll tell you what a Final Girl is if you aren't into horror movies. Uh, in a horror movie, Final Girl is the one who's left standing when the credits roll. Yada, yada, yada. The book is about a support group full of women who survived horror movie type scenarios. I did enjoy the book. I thought it kind of had the Grady Hendrix problem, as I'm going to refer to it, where the ending just doesn't seem realistic to me, and so that kind of burned the rest of the book. The rest of the book was good, and then you get to the ending, and it's kind of like, bleh. I just last week read... Uh, my Best Friend's Exorcism, which is going to be an Amazon original, and that book was good too until it got to the ending and then it was just unrealistic, which almost ruined the whole thing for me, and that's why that book is not on the favorites. This one was just a little less annoying to where it, it made it on onto the list ever so slightly. I did see they are making this into a TV show too. We will see. I'm not quite sure, but I did like this book. I would recommend reading it. Maybe the unrealistic ending won't bother you as much as it bothers me. Uh, it won't stop me from watching either of the shows, though. I'm very curious. Unless the show is bad and then I won't continue to watch it. But I'll at least give it a shot. Moving on to beauty products. This is the longest part of the list. I will, if you haven't noticed, put some timestamps if you want to skip. Like, if you're not interested in beauty products, you can skip away from that. The first product or line of products is Olaplex. I bought the little set. I'm, I've been throwing pictures up here this whole time so you know what I'm talking about. I was able to try multiple products. I was a little nervous about the shampoo and conditioner just because I had read either rave reviews or reviews that said I was making their uh, people's hair fall out and I decided to just try it because I'm already losing my hair for various reasons. So like I could just buy a wig if it fell out. But my hair was so damaged I wanted to give it a shot. Surprisingly, I was on the good side and I'm actually losing a fraction of the amount of hair with each wash that I was before I started using Olaplex. I would say I'm losing probably a quarter of what I was. It, it's actually kind of startling because I was losing so much hair. So uh, I definitely recommend that. If you're not interested in the shampoo and conditioner, I do at least recommend their most popular treatments, which are number three and number eight. One is, I don't remember what it is. It's kind of like a hair mask that you wash out. And I think number eight is like a leave-in treatment. But those are their most popular things. I also recommend the bonding oil. I had a different hair oil that I liked a lot, but I like this one even more, so... Moving on is to the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. 
So I get incredibly dry areas of my body in the winter, specifically my lips, right here, and my nose. The rest of my body is okay, but like this middle section gets incredibly dry. Uh, this lip sleeping mask it saves my lips in the winter. You know, you could see they're still a little more textured than they would be in the summer, but I'm not having like the constant peeling, chapped, cracked situation. I put it on before bed and if I wake up and I notice it's particularly dry, I will put some on in the morning as well. I bought a little set of like five to try the different scents or flavors. And I keep one in here and I keep one in my bedroom. But you need so little, you basically just rub your finger in it once and it's enough for both lips. So it'll last quite a while. This next item is a rediscovery. It's the Benefit Professional. When I first got into makeup, I tried it because everyone swore by it and I didn't understand. It wasn't working. It look, it made my makeup look weird. But then I realized what was making my makeup look weird was the skincare issue. I had very dehydrated skin um, because of the products I was using. I had stripped and ruined the moisture barrier. Now that my skin is in tip top shape, except for this pimple, I find like everything works great when it didn't years ago. This I decided, I found an unopened thing in my drawer and I decided to give it a try and it's really great for, if you see I have texture, I don't know if you can see it without this. I have texture on my forehead from old acne scars and then I have large pores here and here. And this does just help smooth it out really nicely. I really like how my makeup looks on top of it and now I truly understand why everyone loves it so much. Uh, the next item is Pat McGrath Lust Gloss. I got this as part of my birthday gift and it's truly a luxurious lip gloss. I don't wear lip gloss too frequently so I'm not going to buy a whole bunch of these but I will replace it when it's gone. It feels nice. It looks nice. It's not sticky. It doesn't have a strong smell. The smell is my issue with Fenty. I'm sensitive about smells. Some of them just get under my skin and Fenty doesn't smell bad at all, but I don't like how it smells. So, uh, the Pat McGrath one, it doesn't even have a smell. Okay. It does have a smell. It, this smells like a vanilla cupcake. Like, uh, very much smells like a lip smackers kind of thing. And I can get behind that. I don't know. The Fenty one kind of smells like medicine to me. But I will be replacing that gloss when it's gone. It is my favorite lip gloss. Once my Fenty ones are gone, I'll probably replace those with Pat McGrath shades. The Way Curl Cream. The fragrance free one in particular. So I started using a curl cream this year and it weighed my hair down. My hair was kind of like greasy and it just cut, like it didn't hold the shape like this. I mean, my hair loses volume. This was way more voluminous earlier. My hair just loses volume because it's thin and fine. But adding a product like that really weighed it down. So I thought maybe curl cream wasn't for me. However, I got this as a sample with an order and it is great. It keeps my hair very hydrated. It doesn't weigh it down. I can use a normal amount. I don't have to worry about using too much. I love that it doesn't have a fragrance. I try to limit the type of fragrance in my hair care because I don't want it to clash with the perfume or mix with the perfume and give me a migraine or something like that. So this has been really nice. I will purchase the full size when I finish up my sample. I don't do my hair curly every time I wash it because it's a whole process. Curly and wavy people understand what I mean by that. This one will be shocking if you've been here at all. It is an eyeliner. The Stila Stay All Day Waterproof Eyeliner. It is a liquid felt tip pen. I have it on my eyes today, the brown one. I don't know if you can tell. Ah. Uh, I've been practicing my eyeliner, but wearing it more. I still can't do a wing, maybe one day. I love it. It's easy to use. I like the finish of it. It's not overly matte. It's not too satin. It's very beautiful. These also go on sale quite often. I repurchased them and added the, I repurchased the black one and added the brown one during an also sale where they were like $10. And I love they don't dry out. So, you know, I can keep them for their whole shelf life. And even if I don't use it up, 
you know, right away or too fast, it is still wet. Piggybacking on that is the Urban Decay 24-7 Eyeliner. I had originally bought Morphe eyeliners when they were on sale because I was new to makeup and just trying to like see what I liked and what I didn't like for tight lining and my waterline. And it came off in like two seconds, so it just didn't work. I bought the 24-7 like waterline black. I wish they would come out on the waterline in more colors. And I really like how that work looked. I, I've slowly been adding colors. I think I have four now. And it does stay quite a while in my waterline. I've just been wearing this for like eight hours now or something. So it has worn off. I didn't touch it up when my video didn't work the first time. But I really like them. I am not so much into pencil for like my eyelid because I have kind of like loose eyelids and it just doesn't work very well. But for tight lining up here and my waterline, I do like those a lot. Next, something else I've been dabbling in is false eyelashes and the Kiss Strip Lash Lash Kiss Strip Lash Adhesive has been my best friend. I could never get Duo to work. I know it's everyone's favorite. Something about my eyeballs just doesn't like it and it doesn't stick. I remember trying this way back in the day when I got my first pair of false lashes and it worked well. So I decided to try it again because it's on sale for $3.99 and it works great. So if you find that Duo doesn't work for you, maybe give this one a try. Uh, next is Urban Decay Single Shadows. I'm going to show you these in person to to get the full effect here. I I really like Urban Decay shadows. I think they're they're really nice quality. I think their naked palettes are good for beginners, and I think all their other shadows are just super nice. And they repackaged, I'm not sure if they reformulated their single shadows, and they're in these like acrylic cases that are so luxurious. I can't get enough. I want every single one just so I can have them all stacked together and looking pretty. They're fantastic. But I also just like that they're shades that you can't get in their naked palettes or something like this nice like green. I don't remember if this is a moon dust one. They did bring back moon dust ones. Not all the same colors. I'm not sure if they're reformulated. They look less glittery than the ones I have, so I'm not sure. I need to get one to try, but when I was shopping, they were out of stock. On the single shadows, let's do the ColourPop single, ColourPop single, ColourPop Super Shock shadows. These remind me a lot of the Munda shadows because they look like they're just super, super shimmery. I have recently rediscovered my love for them. I only have three, but I used this purple one recently and figured out like how well they actually work. You know, I was using the first one, which was the shade Amaze, just as everyday makeup and it wasn't really working. And I realized it doesn't really just work for that. It, it's more like a shadow topper than a shadow, and I was using it as a shadow, that shade in particular. The purple one I think you could use by itself, but I digress. I found my love for those. They do dry out, so you have to really tighten the cap on it and try not to collect every single one that has ever caught your eye because you might not be able to use it up. I have three right now. I got this one from the Raw Beauty Christie. I missed the palette, it restocked and I missed it another time. But this Like a Moss, it's like golden green. It's very cool. Um, I haven't used this one yet because I only got it recently. Definitely want more of those. I would also like to try the Super Shock Highlighter and Super Shock Blush next year because I've heard very good things. There's the palettes, palettes. We have the Beauty Bay Wilderness Palette. I have to admit I've only used this once, but I did use five colors to really an experience, I guess is a good way to put it. And the quality is fantastic. I heard Beauty Bay hyped up by everyone and like my Natasha Denona experience, if you haven't seen that video. Sometimes you just need to know, but Beauty Bay is incredibly budget friendly. 
so I decided to give it a shot. And honestly, the quality seems better than ColourPop, if I'm being honest. And I love ColourPop. So I have two palettes. I've only tried the Wilderness palette, but I'm excited to try more. If you're interested in trying something like the Beauty Bay brand itself, I definitely suggest it because they they go on sale all the time. I think I paid nine dollars for the Wilderness palette. You can't beat that. The next one is the Huda Mercury Retrograde. I love Huda's big palettes way more than the Nine Pan palettes. The Nine Pan palettes aren't awful, but I think they're a little overpriced for the inconsistent quality. Also, I don't know why they're inconsistent. Her big ones are fairly consistent. Why don't you just use the same formula? I don't know. So I've been eyeing this palette since it was released, but I never bit the bullet. And this year I decided to finally add it to my collection. And I'm so glad that I did. I've loved every shade in it that I've used. The darkest purple is kind of finicky to work with, just like this one that's on my eye. I don't know, you can't see. I don't know if this issue is the new primer I used or the eyeshadow I used. I want to say because the glitter hasn't creased that it's the shadow, but this is like a brownish purple, not from Huda, but I've noticed if it has purple in it, it can just be so finicky. So I am not bothered by the shade in the Huda palette being trickier to work with because I almost out the gate expect that from anything purpley toned. So I love that palette. It goes on sale quite often. I did not I didn't get it on like the cheap sale, but I did get it on sale. I didn't get it for $30. So I got it for like $40 maybe. I do recommend it. Uh, her large pan palettes are always my top. Like the new nude is always like my number one favorite palette. And this one is very comparable to that in terms of being my favorite. Next we have the Pat McGrath Mothership 8 Divine Rose 2, which is a mouthful. This palette unlocked a dark beast inside of me. I didn't think I was going to fall in love with Pat McGrath because her palettes are mostly shimmers and I like to use multiple mattes. Like I used three mattes just for this look today and two shimmers. I would really like to blend things out. I, the more mattes the better. However, the quality of Pat McGrath shadows are so good that I can't resist them. I like that it challenges me in a way because it is so simple. For me, I think it's easier to create eye looks the more options I have. So I almost have to challenge myself to create something unique with fewer shadows. What I also like is they're great for everyday looks because I can't overthink it. It's kind of like I just pick a shadow and I throw it on and it looks great. It's also incredibly effortless because the shadows are such high quality. So if you're looking to splurge on something, I highly recommend it. I do plan to add more to my collection over the years. She has many sales throughout the year, so you do not need to pay full price ever. Uh, sometimes they're like 30% off, which is a better deal than you can get during a Sephora sale or anything like that. So those are the sales I will watch for and slowly add one at a time to my collection. Now we have two fragrances. The first one is Jo Malone Scarlet Poppy. This fragrance family is florals. The scent type is warm florals. The keynotes are Ambre, Scarlet Poppy, and Tonka Bean. The fragrance description is inspired by the great Scarlet Poppy. This ravishing floral gourmand fragrance is amplified by velvety iris. It has notes of barley and tonka bean for a double hit of sweet decadence with a burst of succulent fig to draw you into its opulent and addictive scent. I love this. I actually got it in a return. I had bought a different fragrance of hers. It did not work and I messaged a friend to help me try to figure out where to start smelling scents because Jo Malone is easily my favorite perfume brand. So she suggested I try four and then I narrowed it down to two and then I, out of the two, I wanted to buy both but I went with this because I liked it a little bit more or I wanted it first, I guess I should say. I do plan to buy the other one. Uh, it's beautiful. It is a very warm scent, which I love in the winter time. I love just smelling warm and cozy. 
I don't generally go for florals, but to me, this one doesn't smell on me. This one doesn't smell overly floral. So the next one is Replica Jazz Club. This I think is a masculine scent or it's marketed as being for men. It is masculine, but you can wear whatever you want, whatever you want. The fragrance family is warm and spicy. The scent type is woody spices. The keynotes are pink pepper, rum absolute, tobacco leaf absolute. The fragrance description is, in this scent, a smooth cocktail of warm scents and spicy fragrances awaken the senses with contrasting lemon and pink pepper, followed by neruli oil, rum, and vanilla perfume atop smoky tobacco leaf. I've seen some people say that this makes them smell like an ashtray, and this does smell like tobacco, but it does not smell like cigarette tobacco. It smells like actual tobacco, maybe a cigar. I love this. It's so warm and cozy. I'm really into masculine scents, or at least like androgynous scents. So this is great. The other one I like, which didn't make the favorites because I like this one a little bit more, is the By the Fireplace. I haven't worn that as much. That one's very sweet, smells like marshmallow, and because I've been, at least in the winter, more into these really warm, spicy scents, I, I did not add that to the favorites list. Let's add some food items in here because who doesn't love food? The first is Pickle Doritos. I think these are discontinued. I don't know if they're bringing them back, which makes me depressed. I wish they were permanent because they're the best pickle flavored thing I have ever had. I love pickle peanuts. I love pickle Pringles, pickle chips. I love pickle everything. And these are the greatest thing that I have that were pickle flavored. And unfortunately, by the time I finished the bag that I had seen, they were gone from everywhere. So that's a shame. If you see them and you're interested, don't hesitate. The next is Sabatasso Gluten-Free Pizza. If you're new here, we don't know how to pronounce things, so I'm sorry if I butchered that. When I was sick with Miss Rona, I unintentionally ate gluten-free for multiple weeks, about four weeks, and then when I started to introduce regular food back in, I started to get really bloated and have heartburn and things like that. And that's when I realized that I have a gluten sensitivity. So I found these pizzas and a lady at Costco told me they were really good when I was looking at them. And they are indeed really good. So I recommend them. Next is Sweet Lauren's Cookie Dough. It is both vegan and gluten-free. You would not know. It is absolutely divine. The only ones they had in stock at the store were like the fudgy brownie, I think they were called, and they literally taste exactly like brownies. I plan to buy them again. They also have sugar cookies, chocolate chip, and these cranberry oatmeal. I want to try all of them. They were so good. It has really been hard this year because I love baking and I love Christmas cookies. It's like my favorite part of the holiday, but I haven't felt well enough to experiment with gluten-free flours. And honestly, I haven't felt well enough to just bake at all. So these already mixed cookies were really helpful to kind of just like cheer me up. The final food item is Amy's gluten-free burritos. Amy's make a, makes a bunch of frozen meals and a lot are gluten-free. I haven't tried many of them, but these burritos are so good and I love them for lunches or like a dinner where I'm not particularly hungry. They're fantastic. Moving on to my other category, these things don't really fit anywhere in particular. I'll start with Bobble Bar Earrings or Sugar Fix by Bobble Bar. I like both brands. I also found they do rings and necklaces, which I love the look of. I don't have any of them yet, but I plan to expand. I think their earrings are so cute. I love, I love that they're usually very sparkly or they're kind of like in style like these are not from there but I have those pink ones or not pink sparkly ones that are like zigzag hoops those are by them the Hanukkah earrings I wore were by them uh there was one where I wore lemon earrings or like leaf earrings those are all by them as well so I love their earrings and I plan to add some other jewelry pieces to my collection because I love their stuff Next is the It's Always Sunny podcast. I have been a massive fan of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia for a very long time now, so I was geeked 
when they announced this podcast. It's so funny. It's funnier than the show. They're very, very funny people. I highly recommend it if you like that show. So if you've ever been curious what my sense of humor is, it it's always sunny in Philadelphia. And then Joe Santagato and like his podcast, The Basement Yard, like that's it. That's my humor. Honorable mention to Ikea. I have been a fan of Ikea f since I discovered it in 2009. And uh, yeah, like the new backdrop, most of, most of this came came from there. So shout out to them for having the things I needed to spruce that back up. Uh, basically everything in my house is from Ikea. This chair is from Ikea. The desk this stuff is on is from Ikea. Like, I just love Ikea. Uh, down to the final two. I've done this a little quicker this time. I rambled less because I'm very tired. Uh, sundresses. Uh, I discovered sundresses this year on my body. I knew they existed, but like the first time wearing them and I will never go back. Never. They were so comfortable and so much cooler than like shorts and a tank top or something that when they went on clearance at Old Navy, where I buy almost all of my clothes, I bought the same dress in every color because I loved it that much. And the last item here is the Duluth Trading Free Range Organic Cotton Bralette. So I'm fairly large chested and so I can't often find bralettes that work for me. I don't always like to wear a traditional bra just because it irritates my skin first of all from being so tight and the underwire can just kind of like make it feel like it's harder to breathe which is not something you want with asthma. So I wanted something that was a layer of fabric between my body and the clothes I was wearing just you know clothes are often sheer so I found these and Duluth Trading Company is one of those stores sort of like Old Navy where for me things run very true to size. At Duluth sometimes they run a hair big so I actually have to you know size down from what I would think I would be. These bras are very lightweight. They don't offer a ton of support but that's okay because that's not the point of a bralette. They're so comfortable. They come in a few colors, not, not a wide range, but I like to get the tan ones that just kind of like match my skin. I think they're very reasonably priced. They're like $20. I think right now they're on sale for $13. They go on sale multiple times throughout the year. Duluth is very reliable with like the quality of their clothing. I love shopping there. It's my other favorite store next to Old Navy. Um, they have great size options and uh, I think they have at least a one year if not a lifetime um, warranty on things so if like the stitching came out or something like that they will replace or refund the item which I think is very nice. I think you have to have proof of purchase like either use their loyalty program or like have the receipt but yeah highly recommend those. And that is all I have. If any of these things are your favorite, please let me know in the comments. But also, please let me know what your favorite thing of the year was. Whether it's in each category, which would be cool, or just your favorite thing in general. Because I'm looking for some new things to discover in 2022. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up helps my channel. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I attempt to make videos every Friday. And that's all for me. Have a great holiday if you celebrate Christmas, because this is being posted on Christmas Eve. If you don't, I hope you have a very nice weekend, and I'll see you guys next time.